everyone. Uh, like I said, my name is Camille Gill, and I'm an immigration attorney with Catholic Charities Migration and Refugee Services. Um, migration and Refugee Services has been around for decades. They're one of the three resettlement agencies here um, in the Cleveland area, and we resettle over 300 refugees a year that come from all over the world, um, you know, many places in Africa and the Middle East. Um, but one of the places where our refugees never come from is from Central America. Um, a couple years ago, Migration and Refugee Services opened an immigration legal services program to service all immigrants, including the refugees that we resettle. And um, that's when they hired Sala Gambala, who I mentioned earlier. Sala, since 2009, had really already been, been involved with the children coming from Central America that were on the juvenile docket. Um, and she had been volunteering to represent them. And then um, in 2013, the Immigration Court officially approached Catholic Charities Immigration Legal Services to um, really take over the, the representation of all of these children at court here in Cleveland. So that's just a little bit of background about my organization. Um, like Jeff said, there's really two groups of people that we're assisting at court. There are the children that, cut, that cross the border without a parent, and he just explained what they go through. And then there are um, families that cross the border together. And, and really, that's, normally we see that as a mother and some small children. Um, and so those women, when they cross the border with their children, they are normally immediately apprehended and, and put in some kind of a detention facility. You heard um, them mention Artesia earlier. Um, that's one that um, has been, I think, probably the main one that most of these folks have been sent to. Um, Artesia was basically a secret. The reason that the immigration lawyer population found out about it is that in Denver, Colorado, a, a couple attorneys kept having these clients saying, you know, my family members here, they're in Artesia, they're in Artesia, we need to get them out. And they said, no, you're confused. There's no place called Artesia. What are you talking about? Um, and then finally, with some more digging, they really just discovered this place in New Mexico, in the middle of the desert, um, you know, very far away from, from, from cities, from any access to social services. Um, nobody had any idea that the government was housing these, this, these families at this prison, essentially. Um, I'm very glad that our teacher will be closing by the end of the year, but unfortunately they are opening others, so I don't think the problem is, is totally going away. Um, when the women get to this facility, um, they're living in a jail environment with their children, and, and it's just such an unnatural place to have to take care of your your children. We have a couple attorneys here from Ohio that went to our teacher to volunteer for a couple weeks at a time. And um, she was supposed to be here with us tonight, but had an emergency and could not come. But her stories are just, um, they're heartbreaking, really, about the conditions that these folks are living in. About They talk about being in the icebox for a couple days, this room that is so terribly cold uh, with air conditioning that they're just shivering to death and they don't have any blankets or warm clothes. Um, just, you know, simple things like that, that, you know, you just went through this very long and hard journey to get here, and then you get here and you get locked up in potentially worse conditions that you were, than you were in before. Um, so these women and children held at this facility really had no access to lawyers or to representation, and it, it was basically functioning like um, a deportation mill. Come in, talk to somebody, and get sent back home without really access, being able to access the rights or the claims to defenses that you might have to stay here. Um, Essentially what happens is that if these women can get to talk to an officer, they'll go through what's called a credible fear interview, where they're trying to figure out if there's a basis there for an asylum claim in the United States. And if they get through that, if they're lucky enough to be released from one of these facilities, they um, get released um, to wherever in the United States they can find someone to stay with, similar to the process that Jeff talked about with the youth. Um, but these women are released with an ankle bracelet on. So, you know, they're walking around for the rest of the time here, essentially like prisoners with this ankle bracelet on, um, being trapped in 